Hello, this is all a little bit strange. It's been a few months since I filmed a video and I was beginning to think that I'd forgotten how to do this. But here I am. I am really happy to be back and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you about how you are, what you've been doing, what you've been reading. I have really missed that and that conversation. I haven't been here because I haven't been very well. I was ill at the end of August. It wasn't COVID related, but I was ill and then I pretty much have not felt well since the end of August. And so I've been battling that. I have experienced some really hard things this year that I hadn't dealt with properly. And so physically and mentally, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to do anything. And that made me very anxious about filming and putting myself out there. And it's all been a mess really. And I started university, which took a lot of my time and attention. It was a lot to adjust to. I'll talk about that more in a future video, probably dedicated to university and my university experience. But needless to say, filming went right down on my list of priorities and I'm so sad I didn't put my all into Victober this year which I'd fully intended to do. I realise I'm behind on the Classics Community Book Club which I'm hoping I'll catch up with before the end of the year but please bear with me. This is a really big thing sat here talking to the camera today. It was beginning to feel like I wouldn't do that again and now I feel ready to make a comeback slowly. So you might not see a video from me every week, but there should be a few more videos from me before the end of this year. So I hope that you are all well. I'm gonna just do a casual video today to talk to you about what I have been reading, what I'm currently reading, some of the books that I've been diving into that I would really recommend. It has been a year. We are back in lockdown in the UK again. It's not as strict as the first time, which makes it slightly easier but it's still pretty stressful and just not nice and the winter's coming along so yeah the world is the world is weird but I'm sure you all already knew that we are all living in the same world we're all in the same boat but I hope that you're all really well and I'm sending all my love to you as always let's talk about some books and let's first talk about how my reading has changed since the pandemic so early on in the pandemic I was reading really long books like I read Wolf Hall I read The Light Years so 500 plus pages and I was really into that kind of thing I have read fewer classics this year which has been kind of frustrating because I really wanted to read lots of classics I had lots of my TBR I wanted to get to but I haven't really been in the right frame of mind for them I have just found them a real challenge and kind of a struggle so I haven't read many classics and then in the middle I was just reading a lot um, my reading kind of picked up then uh, towards the summer and now I've been reading lots and lots of children's books which I have been loving. I've revisited old, really old childhood favourites like Beatrix Potter and the Brambley Hedge books which have been very good at reducing my stress levels I must admit but I've also been reading some middle grades and I'm now in the mood for classics but specifically re reading classics and the book that I'm spending all my time reading at the moment is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte which is such a treat. I love this book and every time I reread it I get something new from it and this is definitely what I'm finding with this reread. So I am currently 172 pages in, I'm taking my time with it trying to enjoy every second of reading it and I just can't believe how incredible this book is. So my favourite book of all time is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte but I definitely think that Jane Eyre is the superior of the two. My personal preference is towards Shirley but this really is a masterpiece. I think it's one of the best written books in the English language and it's been so special to go back to it now and I think as I get older I do love it more and more. It's not just that I discover more although I do. I just relate to it slightly more but one thing I have found quite quite strange on this reread is that when I read it the first time I was 15, now I'm 21, which is a recent development, that was last week, my birthday, I was 21, I'm older now 
than Jane Eyre in the book. And when I read it the first time, I was younger than her, which is kind of astounding. <laughs> but I've got a whole video talking about Jane Eyre as part of my Bronte Book Club series, so I'll link that in the description. And while I'm talking about it, I should mention that the Bronte Parsonage Museum have had a really difficult year this year. During the pandemic, they haven't been able to open, they're shut again. So I'll leave a link in the description to their funding page, but also to their online shop. So if you'd like to support them, it will go a long way if you just make a small purchase. So I'll leave all of that in the description if you would like to support. This isn't sponsored, they haven't asked me to do this, although I have worked with them in the past as you may know. I just thought it would be really nice to mention because I know lots of you are very supportive and love the Brontes. My next book is quickly becoming a new favourite and I haven't finished it yet because I'm loving it so much I don't want it ever to end. This is Look Back With Love by Dodie Smith. She wrote 101 Dalmatians and also I Capture the Castle and this is the first part of her autobiography and I don't want to say too much about why I'm reading this but basically I am coming to the end of my Paper and Heart Society series and I'm moving on to something else. So I've been reading lots of Edwardian fiction Fiction, lots of Edwardian children's books and also lots of books about living in the Edwardian era. That's all I'm really going to say but I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, I'm too nervous to say it out loud, but I'm hoping that I might and I have started writing a book set in the Edwardian period for children and I'm hoping that one day it might be published. So I've been doing lots of research and this has been such a treat. So this is about Jodie Smith's life as quite a small child. She grew up in Manchester as it was rapidly expanding after the Industrial Revolution, constantly shifting and changing and it is in the very early years of King Edward VII's reign. If any of you have read I Capture the Castle then you'll know how warm and cosy that book feels and this is exactly the same. Like I said I am on page 179 and I've got a few chapters left and I don't want to read them because I want to savour this forever but there are more instalments as she gets older to her autobiographies and I think this is going to be I don't want to say it but I feel like this might be my favourite book of the year I just need to finish it, I just don't know when. This is incredible and it's quite difficult to come by. I got this from the Waterstones website and I couldn't really find it anywhere else so you might be lucky if you would like to read this. But if you can get your hands on a copy, please do. It's perfect for the winter, I would say, when you want to read something that just makes you feel good. It makes you feel good when you read it, it makes you feel good when you think about it and you just want to live within the pages of the book and I don't often feel that with autobiography so this has been a lovely surprise. It is Look Back With Love and I certainly do look back on reading it with lots of love. On the theme of the Edwardian I will not tell you everything I've been reading because that will give a lot away on the kind of thing that I'm writing and like I said, I'm a bit hesitant to talk about it because I don't know if it will get published. I'm just working really hard on it at the moment and that has involved a lot of really cool research. But one of the things I do want to show you is this. This is the girl's own paper. This is from 1905 and it is an Edwardian magazine. I've been reading quite a lot of Edwardian magazines and I've managed to get my hands on quite a few both in book form kind of bound together and the actual magazines. The Girls Open Paper isn't my favourite, it's quite traditional and there are lots of different stories and writing in here and not all of them are to my taste but it's been great research and I've loved all the pictures and just the language and all that kind of thing so it's been such a pleasure and I just I mean look at all these illustrations, they're so fantastic and I also love the advertisements on the back like Cadbury's Cocoa and Pear's Soap and Fry's Cocoa, Bird's Custard Powder, 
all of this stuff is great and if you'd like me to then I would love to film some videos specifically on things I found in Edwardian magazines and newspapers, things that we can relate to in the 21st century but also other things that I have just found really funny or cool or activities in them so if you'd like to see those kinds of videos then let me know because I've got lots of things like this I'd love to be able to share with you. Like I mentioned earlier I've been reading lots of children's books, lots of middle grade series recently and I have been loving it so much. Often we see children's books as lesser or not as worthy of attention but that's definitely not the case and I found two series that I have loved so much. I'm still continuing with all the books and I really wanted to share them with you because I think that you're going to love them if you haven't already read them. So the first series is Robin Stevens's Murder Most Unladylike series series. I read the first book years ago when it first came out and always intended to finish the series or to read them as they have been published but then it just kind of slipped to the back of the pile and then I picked up the second book, Arsenic for Tea, and I loved it so much that I have since read First Class Murder and Jolly Foul Play and I'm about to read the next book, Mistletoe and Murder, and I have been alternating these with these gorgeous books. This is Catherine Woodfine's Sinclair's Mystery series which are set in the Edwardian period and they are mystery books set in a department store. I've also been watching lots of period dramas lately so I watched Mr Selfridge which I'd watched the first time but had forgotten about so I was watching that and reading these and that was such a treat to be able to kind of imagine it more and to see the two side by side and I've loved these so much so I've been reading one of these and then one of Robin Stevens and one of these one of Robin Stevens and that's been working really well so the books that I have read in these series is the first First one, The Clockwork Sparrow. The second one is The Jeweled Moth. I have also read The Painted Dragon and I'm currently reading The Midnight Peacock and they are wonderfully diverse books, I would say quite surprising when you think of historical fiction, although it's not actually that surprising when you look at the actual history. They have great characters that you really fall in love with and root for, mysteries that unravel before your eyes. I have had great pleasure in trying to guess who the murderer is or who is the criminal in the books and sometimes I've guessed right, other times I've been very very wrong, which is always really fun to do. Because they are children's books they are written so beautifully and they just feel like you are meeting an old friend as you read them and that has been so wonderful. I think we all need to read children's books. I think they have an innocence about them but also a hope that we really feel like we need in this day and age. So if you're looking for a good book that will offer you the perfect escape back into the past then you should read Robin Stevens's books which are set during the 1930s and you should also read Catherine Woodfine's which are set in the Edwardian period. I have loved both of these and for very different reasons they work really well together as well. You won't feel when you read one like you have already read the other if you know what I mean. They're very separate but both are amazing. More than ever I would love to know what you are currently reading. What have you You've been reading over the past few months? What are you hoping to read soon? We're coming up to the end of the year, it feels very close. I think I've read about 60 books so far this year which has been really amazing and I think I might possibly get that to 70 if I read a few more this month although I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I'd just love to know how your reading is going and also how you are doing in general. It's been so nice to sit down and talk to you about books again. I have really missed this and just feeling like you're talking to an old friend. Like many of the books I've read, that's really what I'm craving at the moment. So thank you so much for watching this video and for sticking with me. Happy reading!